This is Kelly Davis, your host of the Untold Miracles podcast. And today we are very blessed to have a remarkable woman on the show who is a loving mom, a driven entrepreneur, a passionate designer who believes the truest form of success is giving back. Her company, now valued over a billion dollars, was started with just $500 in her spare bedroom. I'm a big fan of her designs. I'm wearing them today. It is such an honor to have you on the show. Kendra Scott, welcome to the podcast. Oh, Kelly, thank you so much for having me. Thrilled to be visiting with you today. Before we start, Kendra, I just want to thank you for your generous support of Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. I know we have 60 plus hospitals who financially benefited from your company. You've also launched a new charm collection that benefits CMN hospitals. We are so grateful for your big heart and all you do to help save kid lives. Oh my goodness. I mean, we are so thrilled. We're the ones that feel lucky, honestly, to be involved with such an amazing organization. And just to see, I mean, we get to see firsthand through our Kendra Cares program, which is in hospitals, as you mentioned, across the United States, where we get to bring a little bit of joy and happiness to these families and to these children during a difficult time. And to see what your teams also do um, and having that partnership, it's really been phenomenal. And we just feel so very blessed that we're able to work with you and and touch so many children across the country. Well, we feel very blessed too. We actually just did an event in LA and we worked with Kendra Scott because you have an amazing program where if anyone wants to raise money for charity, they can contact your company and you will donate 20% of the sales back to that charity. So I just want to encourage anyone who's listening, you give to every organization that contacts you. Yeah. You know, and I started my business almost 17 years ago. Um, I started it, as you mentioned, out of my spare bedroom. And for me, when I started, you know, giving back was really important. I had, you know, lost my stepfather to cancer. And I knew that, you know, we have a very short time on this earth. And, you know, while I was here, I wanted to do something good. And so I decided then that if anyone called me, if they needed help, I would always have something to give. And so back then I didn't have a lot of money because obviously I was bootstrapping starting a business, but I could make a piece of jewelry for an auction or give to a raffle or give my time. And, you know, we decided then that if anybody would ever call, we would never say no, that we would figure out a way to help them. Here we are 17 years later, and we still have that same policy. And it can be a large national organization like Children's Miracle Network to a hometown crisis. You know, recently we were dealing with hurricane uh, issues and floods and helping people find shelter and resources that they needed to literally a friend in need. Um, I think, you know, just this week we've hosted many families who may have somebody who's going through medical care that needs help with medical expenses or other things that are going on in their lives. And we're hosting these events in our stores across the country. And it's pretty remarkable. Last year, we hosted 10,000 events Mm -hmm. um, for for different people across across the globe. And we were able to give four and a half million dollars back to those organizations and people that needed it. And I think as a company and as a founder, I'm definitely that's what I'm most proud of for sure. Well, in addition to the four and a half million that you raised, you donated over 75,000 pieces of jewelry. It's just so incredible (laughs) that you were able to do that. Well, on this podcast, we talk about miracles and I feel like you've experienced a few in your life. And I want to go back to when you were 19 and you decided to start your own hat company. I want to know if there were any miracles involved in your inspiration for this company and what was the biggest lesson you learned from that experience? Sometimes in our lives, things happen and sometimes, you know, those moments can be amazing and wonderful and, and fabulous. And sometimes they can be scary and, um, you know, and sad. And I think when, you know, my stepfather was diagnosed with brain cancer, he was kind of one of those unstoppable forces. And, you know, he served two tours in Vietnam. He was a Purple Heart recipient. Uh, he had a smile that would just light up a room. When you see him, you were just drawn to him. You know, he was just that kind of person. And so it just seemed impossible possible to me that that man could be diagnosed with brain cancer. It just didn't seem real. And so in high school, when a lot of other people are thinking about, you know, going to homecoming and prom, I was spending a lot of time at MD Anderson in Houston with my mom while we were, you know, waiting during surgeries and different treatments and not knowing it, but that experience was going to change my life 
forever. And, you know, I may not have had a typical junior and senior year of high school, but what I did have is this incredible gift, really seeing firsthand that we have an opportunity to do something great while we're here. And I met the most inspiring people that were going through really difficult times, but somehow finding strength and watching these amazing women and men fight for their lives. It really just gave me perspective, and it it was a gift to that time. I started my first business at 19, and I did a headwear company, and I wanted to do headwear for women undergoing chemotherapy, also men, but women especially. We didn't, there wasn't a lot of good options out there or comfortable options. Mm -hmm. Um, When you lose your hair, you know, when you put a wool hat on, it's very itchy. Uh, Mm -hmm. And so I started sewing cotton linings and giving them to some of the women and realizing like maybe I could start a business that could give back. So my first company I started, you know, as a 19 year old idealist wanting to save the world, (laughs) you know, one hat at a time. During that time, I remember taking my stepfather to the store and wheeling him in. At that point, he was in a wheelchair and his speech was was limited due to the, the cancer, but he understood everything that was going on. And he was so proud and beaming and tears in his eyes and he got three words out and they were, you do good. And mm, um, wow. those three words have really shaped my life. And the, those three words that he was able to piece together where's my miracle? Because I keep those words in my desk. I have them in my wallet. I look at them almost daily. And as a reminder of the gifts that you've been given to do something good with them. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. I'm going to put that up on my desk because that's, (laughs) that's just an amazing mantra to live by. If you look up hashtag you do good, Uh you'll see what some of the things that now, you know, we have 2000 employees at Kendra Scott are doing good every day in Rob's memory. Mm. Um, so if you have anything you ever want to share or anyone listening wants to share on you, on hashtag you do good, we would love to see the good you're doing too. Oh, that's so great. I will definitely, I'll do that today. I would love for you to share what happened the day that you closed the sign on your door for the last <laughs> time at the hat company, because the lessons that I learned from reading about that were so powerful. Tell our listeners about that day. After five years of running that store, seven days a week, open to close, I was, you know, had this big grand idea that we were going to open hat stores all over the world and hats were going to come back like it was 1940 again. Um, Clearly that didn't happen, even though I'm still a huge lover of hats. And it was such a sad time. At that point, I had lost my stepfather. My business was failing. I couldn't pay rent. I couldn't figure out how to keep it going. And I had to close it. And you know, that last day, the moving truck came and moved what I could, you know, had out and I had to shut it down. And I knew that when I, we had one of those like silly signs that say, I'm sorry, we're closed on one side and yes, we're open, you know, like mm-hmm. we didn't have, you know, that was the technology back then. <laughs> and so I knew like that some, it was very symbolic to me about turning that sign over for the last time and not being able to go back the next morning and, and open it back up. And we were in like a strip outdoor strip mall kind of thing. And and I turned the sign and it was actually inside the door. And I went out in the stoop and of course it starts to rain like every good story, you know, it starts (laughs) to rain on me and I'm crying and I'm feeling sorry for myself. And I'm thinking, Oh my gosh, what have I done? And I hear something kind of thump behind me and I turn around and the sign says, yes, we're open. And I'm like, I swear I turned this. And then I was like, I just went through this whole situation, you know, the drama of having to turn the sign. I got to go back in now and turn the sign again. And I was like, really, God, like, this is like, what kind of sick joke is this? You know, I'm already (laughs) going through enough. But then it really like it, it was like, hello, this is a sign, Kendra. Like, this is an actual sign. (laughs) Yes. And it said, yes, we're open. And I sat there on the stoop and I really did like kind of look up to the sky and go, okay, Rob, what are you saying to me right now? And it was, Kendra, you need to be open. You need to be open to what's going to happen next Mm -hmm. and that there's a reason that you're going through this right now and pay attention because something great is going Mm -hmm. to be around the corner, but you have to be ready for it and don't give up. And I, I felt that. And it was like, all right, I've got to be open to the next thing that's going to happen. And now in retrospect, that business 
was the greatest gift I ever had. It was a master's degree in the school of hard knocks. Really. Mm, That ending for you that was so painful at the time opened up the most beautiful billion dollar new beginning. (laughs) And 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 it's hard when we're in it to be able to be able to trust God and know that he's got bigger dreams than we have for ourselves. And it is a miracle. Well, I know your story is well documented. You were pregnant with your first child when you decided you wanted to turn your love of jewelry into a business. You walk store to store in Austin selling to local boutiques. Now your company is flourishing with over 2,000 employees. How were you able to take that leap of faith? First of all, it's a miracle anytime a business can be successful. Mm. Just starting a business for anybody who has started one or who knows what that feels like, it's a miracle when you can, you know, get it day to day, right? And just grow that business. So I think, you know, for me, I had two young boys. Um, you know, I, I, when I started, I think starting in Austin, Texas was a miracle. I think about that day you talk about of me going store to store with my little baby, my firstborn son in a little baby carrier. And I had put my jewelry in a tea box. And, you know, I walked into these <laughs> boutiques in Austin and I think about this all the time because this is a really supportive community for local businesses. And I think if I would have started in New York or another big city, they may have laughed me out or called security. Who knows what would have happened, you know, but this town embraced this girl and, and gave me a shot. And I think, you know, I was told in the early days when I was starting my company that you couldn't be a real fashion brand if you weren't out of, you know, the coast, out of New York or L.A., uh, London. And for me, that was like, well, let me show you. You know, I know we can be something great. And this is an amazing city. And I really believe that, like, starting here was one of those miracles to give me my wings to fly. How did you get the momentum to take the action that day to start the company? That little baby that was handed to me was all the motivation that I needed. You know, when you become a mother and they hand you this little bundle <laughs> and they, you know, your life has ch- it changes. Everything that you thought was important suddenly becomes so, you know, you think, oh, what I thought was important yesterday, now that I've got this little baby in my arms, this is all that was, it was really, truly important to me. But I loved fashion and I loved design. And after losing Rob, I desperately wanted to do something good. And I wanted to make him proud and I wanted to help other people. And I thought, what if I could do all three of those things? What if I could be a present mother to my child and create a business that allowed other mothers and parents to also be there for their kids? And what if I could also give back to my community in a really meaningful way that would be success? And so out of, you know, having a newborn baby, I created Kendra Scott on three principles, which were family, fashion, and philanthropy. And you know, that's really how it started out. I didn't have these big dreams that I was going to build a billion dollar brand. Honestly, Kelly, I just wanted to be the best mom I could be. Mm. I wanted to provide for my family and I wanted to help people in the process. Just doing research on you, you were always that girl when you were younger who was gravitating to the person that was sitting alone at school and being kind to them. And I think you had a special needs uncle as well. Yes, I do. My uncle, Larry, he is so amazing. Tell, tell me about him because I know that probably shaped a lot of your reason for wanting to give back. I can't believe you know about that. A lot of people <laughs> don't know about my unbelievable uncle. You know, my mom, literally, if any of you have ever seen the movie Coal Miner's Daughter, Um, That is my mother's life. Um, Mm. She was raised on a farm. Um, My uncles, all of my uncles and my grandfather, they worked in the fields during the day and then they worked in the mines at night. She grew up with no indoor plumbing. Um, I mean, really unbelievable story. And one of my uncles, he was a twin. And unfortunately, during birth, he had an issue and, and ended up causing him to be disabled. And He couldn't speak. He would only like kind of make noises, but my family knew what those noises were. Mm. You know, we knew if it was a loud, how loud it would go and the, and the pitch and the, and I remember what first when I was little and, you know, me, you know, seeing him, I was scary because he'd be making these noises. And my mom said, no, no, no. And she started saying, you just have to learn to speak his language and how gentle he was. And she said, just, and I connected with him in such an amazing way. And I, felt like sometimes we get scared of things that we don't know. And having a family that 
you know, looked at people and taught me to look at people for their heart and look inside of them and figure out ways to communicate. And sometimes that is as simple as getting down to a child's level and holding their hand or just giving them a smile or, you know, and I think that connection really meant a lot to me. And I saw my family firsthand loving not just him, but loving their neighbors. And even when they didn't, couldn't provide, even sometimes they were difficult, they always had extra plates at the table for other people in, you know, in the community. And it was just how we were raised. And I think, you know, growing up and then going to school, when I would see other kids bullying or making fun of somebody, it just brought me back to my uncle. And I thought, don't do that. That's not okay. And you don't know his heart or their heart. And I was just drawn to other children who, you know, were having a hard time and befriending them. And I think, you know, that has gone through my entire life. And I think it, it's so enriching when you can bring these people together in your life because everyone has a story. As you know, we treat 10 million kids each year at our children's hospitals, and they have different illnesses, diseases, accidents, and so many of them are judged and they are excluded because they don't communicate or aren't able to communicate. I have a 22-year-old nephew who has no language and he makes weird noises too. (laughs) And it's so amazing when people will choose to reach out with love and no judgment. I want to know if you have any special experiences that you'd like to share from your visits to our children's hospitals, maybe a special child you've met through the Kinder Cares program that you'd like to share. Kelly, there are so many. Um, I, you know, recently met this amazing teenage girl. Uh, she was at um, an MD, an MD Anderson, actually. I was just back there recently, mm-hmm. and we did a Kendra Cares event there and was able to meet her and go into her room. That day, she wasn't able to come out into the event. Uh, she, you know, her immunity was not in a great place. She needed to stay in her room. So I was able to go into her room and visit with her and her family. And we have now stayed in touch. Um, I've stayed in touch with her mother and her aunt. I sent her a little special gift. Mm. Um, and she's this amazing, strong girl who was on, you know, cheer- one day on the che- you know, cheerleading and athletic. And the next day found out that she had a very serious form of cancer. And um, her whole high school life also changed. But her attitude and her resilience and her strength they're so inspiring. And, you know, I hear people say, oh, Kendra, you're inspiring. No, those children are inspiring who, you know, are going through these things and still can manage to, I walked into her room and her smile, it was just like beaming, a ray of light (laughs) and uh, immediately connected with her. You know, these connections that we've made are so incredible. And, you know, not just for me, it's my team you know, all of my store girls, they volunteer their time to go do the Kendra Cares program in these hospitals. And the connections that our Kendra Scott, you know, family members have made with these children, it's just beyond anything you could ever imagine. And it's just such a gift, Kelly, to, to be able to share a little bit of, of their time with them, you know, during once a month that we get to see them. Well, speaking of your team, of your 2,000 employees, 98% are women. What advice would you give to young girls and women as they enter the career field to empower them to succeed with their dreams and goals? I was really blessed to have a mom and dad who told me, you know, that I could be anything I wanted to be, to be and truly believed in me even when I was having trouble believing in myself. And so I think if there's a message that I could tell the, you know, girls out there that may be listening to this, is you can be anything. I was a girl raised in a farm community in Kenosha, Wisconsin. I didn't finish college because I started my first business at 19. I had no professional training in jewelry design. I was told that you couldn't start a fashion company out of Texas and be successful. Um, I was literally told no way more than I was ever set told yes. Mm. And I think you have to, every time that happens, is you have to have a little fire in you that gets lit to say, I will overcome this. I believe in myself and I can do it. You can be anything you want to be if you believe in yourself and never give up. You can make your holiday giving go further by rounding up your purchase at participating Ace Hardware locations this season. While doing your holiday shopping at Ace Hardware, make sure to round up your purchase to benefit your local Children's Miracle Network Hospital. Your pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters add up to make a major impact. 
Last year's Ace Hardware Holiday Roundup campaign raised more than one million to help the kids. It is such an honor to have you on the show. Kendra Scott, welcome to the podcast. Oh, Kelly, thank you so much for having me. I want to talk quickly about the culture at Kendra Scott because you provide unique perks like an in-house nail bar, a fitness center, (laughs) a smoothie bar. My favorite is paid philanthropy days. That is so incredible. How many days do your employees get a year for that? So they get they get to get three paid days, but then they also get to do team philanthropy days. Really, they're kind of unlimited for us. It's like if you have something your team wants to do and it's giving back to the community, we're going to support it a million percent. Um, in addition, you know, we have a lot of new moms. So, you know, giving 12 weeks of maternity leave and then a work transitional work back is important to me. Having wellness rooms for nursing moms. We have mother's milk refrigerators dedicated to mother's breast milk. You know, in the old days, I brought my kids, my babies to work. I had a pack and play in my little office and, you know, I'd get on a conference call and I'd have to pass the baby to one of the girls in my office and be like, okay, hold him for a second while I take this call. We still have this mentality here, even though we've grown so much. It is all about family. It's all about supporting each other. If you have a culture that supports mothers and fathers and parents, they are going to be so much happier and they are going to stay with your company and they're going to give so much. And I think if more employers got that, they need to just respect and love their employees like they were their own family. This world would be a very different place, Kelly. (laughs) Everyone should be doing that. But I want to share a personal miracle with you from one of your employees, a miracle that you've created in her life. This is from Sheena, and she says that she's been working for Kendra Scott for over the last four years and has had three, all three of her children as one of your employees. She says that you have given her the miracle of being a working mom that can still care for her family and have a successful career. You have blessed her with the opportunity and trusted her to build your philanthropy department and future foundation and help so many people in need. You have trusted her with something that is so special to you and for the opportunity, she is forever grateful. You're going to make me cry. Well, I mean, that's just one of 2,000 employees. And I just think of the ripple effect that this culture that you've created is creating miracles for your employees, but then they're going and creating miracles for everyone around them. And it's powerful. And I I just want you to be aware of that. Thank you. You know, I, I truly believe that, like, every act of kindness leads to another act of kindness. Mm-hmm. And it can be the simplest thing that you do, like literally just smiling at someone in the line at, you know, Starbucks um, and or saying hello to someone or asking them how their day goes. I know it sounds so small and trivial, but I think the more that we just go out into the world with an open heart and an open mind um, and really foster that in our children, it really it can it, you can see a shift of, you know, love does win. Well, um, how is it that you have been able to find balance in having three kids and raising your family and running a billion dollar company? Balance is a tricky word, right? I don't know if there's ever truly balance. I mean, I think some days I feel like I do it great and I'm like, oh, I'm hitting on all cylinders and I'm, you know, today was a great day. Then there's mornings I wake up and I think, oh, I wish I would have been able to do this you know, get home earlier or, oh, I forgot to get my son basketball shoes and he has tryouts today. I'm a terrible (laughs) mother. You know, you go through these things of, you know, you're, you just have to try in your heart to go every day. I'm going to do the best I can do. And I'm, it's okay to not be perfect. I don't even know what perfect means. Mm -hmm. Um, But you just, I think for me, you know, I surround myself. I have an incredible husband now. Mm. Um, I have my mother is still close by to me. I have an incredible support group at work. We, you know, we help each other when we need to. I have amazing moms that I know at my children's schools that, you know, we help each other and pull a carpool or, you know, support each other. And I think it does take that. It takes not not thinking that it's, you know, you have to act like you know, you're doing everything great. I'm the first one to raise my hand and say, oh my God, I need help today. Or, you know, I'm, you know, be, it's okay to be vulnerable. And even with my kids to say, guys, I'm so sorry. Like I forgot about that. Or like, help you know, like to be, okay, it's okay to make a mistake. And I think as moms, we try to be perfect 
at everything we do every day. And that's not realistic. And it's just going to make us feel like down on ourselves. And I think saying, hey, you know what, I can use some help today. And there's a lot of other women that will appreciate and other people that will appreciate honesty and be and would be loving to help. I want to know what you want people to think of when they hear the words, Kendra Scott. Love. Mm. I mean, I hope they think of love and kindness. You know, that's the foundation of everything we do here. I like your slogan, what matters to you matters to us. What matters to you matters to us. I mean, we say all the time when we open stores in new cities that we're spreading Kendra love. Mm-hmm. We have like yellow heart emojis that we love to use in all of our all of our things, but it's true. I mean, I think as a brand, it is a lot it is about love and kindness and we believe that we can be, you know, that we can create beautiful products and that is important, but we want, you know, I think making a connection with our customers in a very meaningful way is so important and the products become even more important to you when you know the heart behind them. I just have a couple quick fire questions for you before we end. Is the motto that you like to live by, is it you do good? You do good. I think back so much, Kelly, to that day and him saying those words to me and honestly, you know, it's not only just my motto, it's become our company motto. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for this new motto for myself. So what is your favorite book? Well, I love to read. I know that's a really loaded question. So I know. My God. I, you have a few that oh, you love. Oh, my God. My favorite book. There's so many. I would say I love The Alchemist. Mm, um, so good. I think everybody should read that book at some point in their life. Um, I think it's a beautiful story. I'm like, I want to read it again. I love that book. Okay, this is going to be a hard question because I know all of your stores are like your babies, but you have a lot of retail stores. I think over 90 now. What's your favorite store? Oh, this is so hard. I would have to say it's, you know, it's our first Austin store on mm. South Congress. Mm-hmm. Um, we're actually moving it across the street into this little bungalow, uh, an old Austin original house that we have. So we could have, because it's one of my smallest stores. So we're still in South Congress. We're reopening our South Congress flagship in a few weeks, November 15th. And I'm so excited because, you know, this is where it started. And I think for me, I didn't have any idea opening that first store that we would someday have stores across the country. Quite honestly, I just wanted to be able to to connect with my customers and I wanted to hear from her directly. And I thought the best way for me to do that was open a store so that I could talk to her every day and find out what she loved and what she wanted more of. And what we found is that, you know, the store obviously made a special connection with our customers. And, you know, we we didn't know it at the time, but we were onto something really special. And so that first one is where it all started. This community is where it all started. So I love our Austin store. What is one thing that people don't know about you? That I'm really kind of goofy. <laughs> <laughs> none of none of your employees know that. No, they all know it. They all they all pretty much know it. Um, I'm silly. I'm really silly. And honestly, you know, I I love fashion and I love coming to work and getting dressed up. All of us girls get dressed for each other, quite honestly. Mm. Like, but when I go home, I'm in sweatpants. I have I still have scrunchies. Like, I'm embarrassed to admit it, but <laughs> I put my hair in a top bun with a scrunchie and I have these fuzzy slippers. My kids make so much fun of me, but like the instant I get home, that is what I do. I'm in my comfy zone. And so many of my boys' friends, because they're like, they live at our house, which I love. They'll be like, you don't really know what the real country Scott is like because they see me like this. So the real Kendra Scott is not what you probably think you want her to be. But that's but that's you know that's how I like it. Oh, that is so <laughs> funny. So do you have a favorite hobby outside of making jewelry? I having three boys has actually been amazing because I have all these women at work and they call me Mama K. So I say I have like thousands of daughters. Um, so I needed these boys to ground me. Mm. So I do a lot of like boy things. I mean, I want to do things that they do. Like I throw a wicked spiral football. You wouldn't <laughs> believe it. Um, I'm the queen of Legos. I can build Legos better than anybody. Um, you know, I just love spending time with my boys. And honestly, they've pulled me into things that I might not have done otherwise. <laughs> um, what is your definition of a miracle? You know, I think, um, like I said, miracles can happen all the time. And I, and I think you have to be paying attention to them. Every morning that I wake up and I'm given an opportunity to, you know, to take a breath and to be able to be here and to do something good and to be around people I love is a miracle. 
Um, I've unfortunately lost people in my life. I lost one of my best friends a few years ago to breast cancer. And I think when those things happen to you, I mean, literally every morning that I open my eyes and I wake up, I think today is a miracle and I need to treat it like such. Today really is a miracle. And I think it's really easy to forget that because we get sucked into these little things that seem like they are really big and um, they just really are there to offer us perspective. Right. The last question, if there were three miracles that you could create in the world today, what would that look like for you? Wow, Kelly, (laughs) that's a big one. Um, You know, I just, I would just love for everybody to live life with an open heart and an open mind and not to judge Mm -hmm. people on what they look like from the outside or what you think you know about them to take the time to look at their heart. And, you know, if everyone did this, that would be an amazing, amazing miracle. And I think, you know, we just um, go through our lives sometimes and we, you know, have a filter and we're not paying attention to the people around us. And if you just take a minute to get to know your neighbor or get to know a friend at work that you may not have talked to before, or, you know, like I said, somebody in line at the, at the Starbucks or grocery store, I mean, what an amazing thing that would be. Um, you know, I tell my boys every day, like literally I tell them, you know, lead with kindness today. And it doesn't have to be something big. The smallest things can make the greatest difference. And, you know, I think that, you know, let's take our time on this earth and like leave our fingerprint in a positive way. I don't know if we need any more miracles after if everyone were able to do that. It would be a pretty it would it would change our world um, immensely. I think it would. I mean, I think, you know, This is a very, I think, a difficult time in history right now. There's a lot of people that, you know, that are, you know, just, I think, not paying attention to humanity of, of, like, look at each other's heart. And that's Mm. the most important thing. And, Mm. and, you know, I think that would be, if there was, if I could put all three into one, that would be it. Open heart, open mind. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Kendra. I know you have a lot on your schedule today, and I'm so grateful that you made time to be a guest on Untold Miracles. We are so excited to continue to work with you to help create miracles in the lives of sick children all across North America. And it truly is our honor to be a part of your amazing brand. We're just so grateful for our partnership. Well, we are so excited and we, and I love our new charm uh, that's supporting Children's Miracle Network. It's a sun. I know. It's so great. So where we came up with it is uh, uh, my, like their children, when they draw a sun, in little pictures, this is kind of what the sun looks like. And there's nothing happier in the world than sunshine. Um, and so the sun is the symbol, and it's a hand-drawn symbol. You'll look under charms, under philanthropy charms, and 50% of the proceeds of that charm will go back to Children's Miracle Network. So we're so excited to be partners, and I believe that the best is yet to come. We're in 29 hospitals with you. I hope that we can continue to expand our partnership with Kendra Cares so that we can bring more joy to the children in these hospitals that are just so brave. It's not like you're just donating items of jewelry. You're bringing a Kinder Cares bar to these kids where they actually get to design. Yes, yes. They get to pick the stones. They get to pick what silhouette they want. And what's so great is that they, they can make it for themselves, but they can also make it for their mom who's been sitting next to their bed, you know, day in and day out, or their favorite nurse. Um, And so it's been such a wonderful thing. You know, we have little coloring sheets and they can color in the color of the stone. And we have iPads for the older kids um, and kids that can't get into the room because they may not be, you know, able to get out of their rooms. We'll bring it to them. So no child misses out. It's such a miracle when you can create a moment for that child where they can step out of the physical pain that they're going through. And so it, it's just amazing what you're doing. And I, I know you get the impact of it, but I want our listeners to know that Kendra Cares program is creating miracles in ways that it's hard to even describe because when you're that parent and you're sitting there watching your child go through what they're going through, they're hooked up to their chemo, they're three years old, and then you get to come in and then there's that diversion and there's that smile that's on their face. Like that matters. That's doing good. It does, it does matter. I think just bringing a little bit of joy and happiness, a little bit of normalcy, like to, so they can th- not think about being sick 
for, you know, for, for part of their day. They can just have fun and they can smile and they can be joyful. And I think, you know, all of these, there's so many wonderful creative therapy programs coming into hospitals and supporting those is so important. And, you know, like I said, we're expanding Kendra Cares into more and more hospitals mm. uh, across the United States. You know, the boys love it because they'll make something we come near Mother's Day to a lot of the hospitals and the boys that are in the hospital, you know, mm-hmm. they, they want to do something nice for their mom. And so they can design a piece of jewelry for her. We've had moms that say, you know, I will never take this off. Like this means so much to me. And, you know, it, it's affecting the whole family, not just the patient, which is really amazing. I also want to thank you, Kendra, because you also donate pieces. And a couple of weeks ago, I was in LA um, with the Sasha project and Sasha is 10 years old and she has several palsy and she designed jeans to raise money for CHLA and all the money raised goes to the art therapy program. She's raised $35,000 and your company donated beautiful pieces to the 20 celebrities that walked in the fashion show of her designs. And then you donated items to all of the miracle moms of those 10 children. It was so easy. I sent an email to your team and they said, yes. (laughs) Yes. That's how it is here. I mean, we really it, it's a it's a company where we want to figure out how to help and um and I think our customers feel that too and I'm so and Sasha what an amazing amazing story and what she's done is so incredible and we were so happy to partner with her and can just love love those kind of partnerships so so glad we could be a small part of that amazing day before we end can you just tell people where they can follow you uh, I know kindrascott.com but what about your social channels on Instagram, it's at Kendra Scott, um, which I'm the Insta- I love Instagram. So that would be like my, my favorite place. And then of course, yes, Kendrascott.com. And then locally, if you have a Kendra Scott store, we would love to host you in our stores. And, you know, we would also love to do a Kendra gives back event. If there's any, any, anything that our listeners uh, need help with, we're here to help. Also hashtag you do good on Instagram. And let's see all the good that you're doing in the world. Yes, hashtag you do good for sure. Kelly, this has been awesome. Thank you so much. And Kendra, I really, um, I want to just get on a plane to Austin just so I can give you a big hug and just thank you for everything. But one day I'll get there, but I'd love the opportunity to meet you and just personally thank you for helping my nephew, helping the tens of millions of kids. Like you're a miracle worker and it is truly an honor to have had your time today. So I hope you have a beautiful day and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Kelly. I can't wait for you to come to Austin. We'll see you soon. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Untold Miracles podcast. If you liked the episode, do us a favor and go to iTunes and leave a review. And if you haven't joined our Facebook group, go to Untold Miracles and leave us your story about your personal miracle. Thank you for your support of Untold Miracles.